Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the leak of highly sensitive documents. The Justice Department launching an investigation as the Pentagon tries to contain the damage. And the showdown over the abortion pill after two federal judges issued conflicting rulings. Now, how future access hangs in the balance for the whole country. We'll have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. There's a darkness inside of me. Scream 6 passed the 100 million mark in domestic box office with a fifth place weekend worth $3.3 million. Air took the court in fourth place. The feel good flick about Nike signing Michael Jordan opened with a better than expected $14.47 million. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves fell more than 60% in its sophomore weekend, landing in third place with $14.5 million. Bonjour, Monsieur Wick, and welcome to La Resistance. John Wick Chapter 4 is at 147 million domestic after a second place weekend worth $14.6 million. <laughs> the Super Mario Brothers movie scored big, earning $146.4 million Friday through Sunday and $204.6 million in its first five days, both better than any other film this year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 558, taking a quick look at TransGuide, looking live at 410 at McCullough. We'll be right back. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The status of the most commonly used abortion pill is cast into uncertainty. How the Biden administration is stepping in. Coming up. And let's look out there with live cam starting kind of cool at 61 degrees, not too bad. Expecting maybe some rain on and off, so we're going to check in with Mike to see when we can expect that. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you had a great Easter with your family and friends. It's Monday, April 10th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're starting off this morning, maybe a light sweater, you know, a little coolish out there. Question is, what about the umbrella? Mike Ostrage is back from a week off on vacation. Good to have you back with us, my friend. Thank Welcome. you. It was great to see some of that rain last week, and we're going to have to get the lawnmower out one of these days now that things have dried up. But not today, probably, because we do have a couple of showers out there, even some right now. It's not a lot, and that's going to be kind of the... Uh, Kind of the situation throughout the day. It won't be raining everywhere constantly, but just a few of those showers out there. Plenty of clouds, as you can see over there at 10 at 410. And this is what's showing up on radar. And I say showing up on radar because there is some uh, spots, a little bit of uh, just light, light mist and drizzle. And not much here in and around town as of right now. We did have a couple of the showers that moved on through here. Uh, this is just some clutter right there around the, the radar site. And a few little sprinkly showers scattered about here and there in town a few more out to the uh, west and then further on out to the west we have seen and nothing as of right now but up there around Junction and also in parts of Alberta County earlier this morning there were a couple of uh, lightning strikes being detected so throughout the course of today don't be surprised if there are just a couple of uh, claps of thunder here and there but most of it is just going to be a few little scattered showers off and on throughout the day temperatures have been pretty steady all morning upper 50s low 60s the normal low in town is 57 so so we are uh, on average all around the area, three to five degrees above normal, but then we're going to be staying just about that much below normal later on today. Humidity, it's there, and that's what, uh, like Steph was talking about, light sweater, light little rain jacket, just because it's sort of that dampish cool out there this morning and throughout the rest of today. Well, first of all, we do have a lot of mold, a lot of oak. Mold's probably going to be staying on the higher side, and looks like oak may be starting to taper off a little bit, hopefully with that. Temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady for the next couple of hours, and then we will have just a few of those light little scattered showers, a uh, couple of thunderstorms here and there throughout the course of the morning and then going into the afternoon, 70 at noon and a high temperature today of 74. So yes, we will be averaging three, five degrees below normal. Not much going on in the in the middle portion of the week, kind of a tranquil forecast, if you will. Then we'll talk about the upcoming weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's going on on the highways and byways? Yeah, Mike, things looking pretty good so far. And you mentioned oak, that's what that's the biggest takeaway that I got from there. <laughs> I need that oak to kind of taper off a little bit. As we take you real quick outside on TransGuide traffic cameras, northeast side, Loop 1604, Pat Booker, things looking good. 410, Jackson Kelly, 
color. It's traffic moving along very smoothly so far on your Monday morning. We do have a couple of uh, stalls, disabled vehicles to kind of let you know about. So let's take a look at our big map here. And uh, again, this is the uh, stall we've been following for uh, about 45 minutes now. It's there at uh, I-10 and Proband, the eastbound lane. So something to keep in mind, but again, not causing any major traffic delays at the moment. Uh, I just looked at the uh, camera in that area and traffic moving along pretty good there. But we do take you out to the southwest side so far and uh, we do have a new incident that's being reported here. This is a stall on the westbound lanes of Loop 410 at Palo Alto Road. So kind of right there where uh, State Highway 16 South, that intersection of 410, Loop 410, the westbound lanes, a stalled vehicle being reported out there at this morning. So make sure to just kind of keep that in mind. And we still have this stall that's being reported out on the far west side. This is on the northbound lanes of Loop 1604 at uh, Military Drive. And there's already construction, as you can see, taking place in that area. So things kind of maybe starting to build up a little bit there. So we'll continue to follow the very latest here. Again, our TransGuide traffic cameras not showing anything major. This is 1604 Wiseman Boulevard, so also there on the far west side and uh, traffic moving along pretty good in our area. But we will continue to monitor the roadways. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. To our top story this morning, three men are facing charges after New Braunfels police found more than $260,000 in cash, guns, and 11 pounds of marijuana. 24-year-old Aaron Dittman Jr., 26-year-old Jonathan Martinez, and 25-year-old Eduardo Munoz are all facing possession of marijuana and engaging in organized criminal activity charges. Now, witnesses told police that they were acting suspicious and that the money and guns could be seen in plain sight. Police were called and searched their vehicle, leading to that discovery. All three men are from the Fort Worth area. An elderly man who disappeared yesterday morning up in Georgetown has been found safe. This is 84-year-old James DeLine. The silver alert was discontinued late last night. No other details were released. Other stories are following this morning. The Biden administration is fighting a federal judge's ruling here in Texas to suspend the FDA's approval of one of the most commonly used drugs to end a pregnancy. The decision could have major implications for abortion access throughout the country. And another case in Washington state is getting a lot of attention. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, it could lead to a lengthy legal battle. This morning, dueling opinions from two federal judges casting the status of a key abortion medication into uncertainty. In Texas, U.S. District Judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled to suspend the FDA approval of Mifepristone, a pill used in more than half the abortions in the U.S. Kaczmarek indicated the FDA had ignored certain risks in approving the drug 23 years ago. The anti-abortion group that filed the lawsuit telling ABC News. We're happy to obtain that preliminary ruling from the district court, but we know Obviously, this is not the last stage and the last word on this issue, and we're, we're ready to go to the next stage. Almost simultaneously Friday, U.S. District Judge Thomas Rice in Washington state issued an injunction to protect the access of Mifepristone. President Biden's administration furiously responding, saying the drug's approval was well supported by science and that this challenge comes too late, vowing to preserve access to the drug. Every option is on the table. The Justice Department immediately filing their appeal to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is set to weigh in this week. This is not America. What you saw by that one judge in that one court in that one state, that's not America. At least 13 states have mostly banned the use of the abortion pill. But if Kaczmarek's ruling stands, Americans in states where abortion is legal also wouldn't have access to the medication. President Biden warning this is the next big step toward the national ban on abortion that Republican elected officials have vowed to make law in America. Leading medical organizations have condemned the Texas ruling to say the FDA approved abortion pill is safe. And the Health and Human Services Secretary also warns the judge's decision could impact the FDA approval process for all drugs from insulin to vaccines. M1, ABC News, Washington. In New Jersey, a religious leader is recovering after being attacked during a prayer service. The suspect is in custody, but so far the motive is unclear. Happened during morning prayers at a mosque in Patterson, New Jersey. We're told the suspect allegedly stabbed the victim twice. People in the mosque were able to stop that suspect. They followed him as he attempted to exit the mosque, and they um, were able to... to um to bring him down and apprehend him and hold him until Patterson Police and Pasay County Sheriff Departments arrived and arrested him. This is the holiest month in the Islamic calendar year, and we want to make sure that 
the safety of those that are just coming to pray is a priority for us and that we take this situation very seriously. Now, this is believed to be an isolated incident, but authorities there in the Patterson, New Jersey area have increased security at mosques. Also in Jersey, classes at Rutgers University will be held today, even though thousands of professors may stay home. Three unions representing 9,000 educators, researchers, and clinicians voted to strike today. The unions are still trying to work out a new contract with the university. Thousands, uh, nearly 70,000 students attend Rutgers. And a portion of the student body is just weeks away from graduation. New Jersey's governor is hoping to meet with both sides today in the hopes of reaching an agreement. In your morning consumer news across the country, billions of dollars are being poured into new factories. The Census Bureau says construction related to manufacturing hit $108 billion last year, the most on record. That's more than what was spent on schools, health care, facilities or offices. More workers are taking advantage of expanded family leave laws. According to the Wall Street Journal, in the 12 months ending in February, over 400,000 people took parental leave each month. That's up 13 percent from a year earlier. Seven states require employers to offer paid leave and four more will add it by 2026. A drought in Mexico can make it tougher to spice up your dinner. One of the biggest makers of sriracha sauce says last year's drought has caused a shortage of the red jalapeno peppers key to that sauce. 609, 61 degrees. And still to come, an Idaho mother is heading to trial almost three years after her arrest on charges of killing her two children. What we are learning now about the case against her. Plus, Easter underwater. This is different. How some divers off Key West got to have a little fun for a great cause. And if you're trying to get organized, you're going to want to keep it right here. After the break, some simple things you can do that can make a big difference. And outside with live cam, lots of clouds out there. Very mild, 61 degrees. So, yeah, a bit on the cool side, but quite a bit of humidity. Do we need that umbrella today? Mike Osterhage will tell you when and where coming up. This morning, as we start a new week, many of our tech devices are getting full with too many photos to count and thousands of emails in our inboxes. I just asked Steph, uh, I have 7,000 pictures on my phone. Yeah, I have 10,500. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need a lot of cleaning. <laughs> so now might be a good time to get digitally organized. ABC's Justin Finch tells us how to get started. For many of us, paper and prints are a thing of the past, but all of the digital junk can build up and be a bit overwhelming. CNS Bridget Carey says there are simple ways to stay organized, starting with the many photos of your kids and pets on your phone, tablets, and laptops. I'm taking pictures of my kids. I don't have time to sit there and clean up my photos. Who has time for all of that? Carrie suggests making it easy for yourself by using a system that will back up your photos automatically in the background, like Google Photos or iCloud. And next, think about your digital documents. Don't just have a folder on your desktop that says personal stuff, school stuff, car stuff. Carrie says use short but specific titles like preschool forms or car loan. And that way, when you do have to hunt for it later, you're not just wondering, wait, where is it? I know it's somewhere in this giant My Documents folder. That's not going to work. And tidy up your email, too. I know it gets out of control. I'm kind of someone who claims email bankruptcy. I have to give up sometimes. But there is a degree at which you should be kind of aware of how to clean up your email, in particular when it comes to storage. By filtering your email to only messages with large file attachments, you can delete them in one big batch and quickly free up space. And manage your subscriptions by searching your email for the word subscription. Like, okay, what, what did I subscribe to? What can I maybe automatically cancel that I'm not really using? And if you feel that your email is completely out of control, Carrie says to consider starting fresh with a new one. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Check this out. It's a scuba Easter bunny hiding real hard-boiled eggs in the waters off of Key Largo, Florida. Yesterday, divers and snorkelers were able to look for them during a fun Easter egg hunt. The hunt took place in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, one of the largest marine protected areas in the United States. The underwater Easter egg hunt raises money for children in need, as well as marine conservation. And over in Chile, animals at the zoo in Santiago hunted for colorful eggs filled with yummy treats. Red pandas, snow leopards, and lemurs all got a special treat in the largest private zoo in Chile. The Easter eggs were from ostriches and collected throughout the year. They were filled with those yummy treats. 
Let's check on traffic at 616. How's it like RJ? Yeah, things looking pretty good so far. No major <coughs> crashes or incidents to speak of at the moment. As we take a look outside with Trans Guy traffic cameras, 281 at St. Mary's there, things looking pretty good in our area. And let me get you back on the rotating camera shot. This so we get a couple of other views from City of San Antonio, Loop 410, Old Pearsall Road. Things looking good in that area as well as we just went back there to 281 San Mary's and uh, 281 San Pedro. Traffic moving along pretty smooth in our area. All right, we got a lot of green here, so this is good news. Um, this stall being still reported there at I-10 Pro Band, the eastbound lanes. But again, I've looked at the camera several times, does not appear to be causing any major delays or traffic backups. Uh, biggest thing we're following right now is another stall. This is reported on the southwest side, Loop 410, the westbound lanes at Palo Alto Road. So earlier I was noticing there was a little bit of a buildup going up 35 right there, but uh, it appears to be things moving pretty smooth in that area. And I was just looking at some of the trans guide traffic cameras in that area right now, and it does not appear to be causing any major delays or backups. Let's take a quick look at those real quick, just to kind of show you some proof here. This is the closest camera to this reported stall, Loop 410 Somerset Road, and things uh, looking pretty quiet out there. So that is good news as uh, we continue to kind of make our way through our Monday morning. I'll get us back on the rotating shot over here, Loop 410 Jackson, Keller Road, things looking pretty good in that area. And uh, it appears as is everyone doing pretty good on a Monday morning right after the holiday week. And uh, guys, you were talking about the uh, email bankruptcy. That's what I need to do. <laughs> Because my emails, do my a purge? inbox, just yes, and I've lost control of it. I'm really fully admit. How yes. many do you have? I got a lot. A lot. <laughs> They're in the thousands. Yeah, it's hard to come through. Oh. Especially if you let them add emails. Up. Yes. Yeah. Oh I'm goodness. that guy. I was. <laughs> so, I mean, not guy. to send you one. <laughs> when I yeah. dump, you know, and it's like, okay, you've just deleted 200 emails, you know, because yeah. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. and then delete your sent and all that stuff. Right. Like, really? Thousands? I think I need to declare email bankruptcy. I didn't know that was an actual term. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Sounds I, like a plan. <laughs> don't feel too bad, RJ. Years ago, yeah. one of our co-anchors, we asked her her email count, and I think oh. she had, was it 15, 15 or 20,000 oh, wow. emails okay. just sitting yeah. there? I lose my mind yeah. at that point. But yes, it's mine is already <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> getting, mm -hmm. needs to be perfect. But RJ's popular. He's a lot of people oh, that send yeah. an email. He, that's he a, is. That's, and, I, and, that's the reason. And we're going to send you a bunch today. <laughs> 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 One thing, though, when you get the people will like to hit reply all. That's true. Uh, yeah. Hi, yeah. Spam Austin. How yes. you doing? <laughs> yes, Spam. <Yeah. laughs> be careful. I'll be on the lookout for that. <laughs> anyway, uh, temperatures this morning holding steady. This, uh, we're Right around upper 50s, low 60s. Light jacket's not a bad idea. It's kind of that dampish cool out there. We've got a couple of sprinkles. Uh, a couple of uh, thunderstorms are going to be possible throughout the day. 74 high temperature. So it's not going to be hot by any stretch, but uh, we'll still have one or two of those showers out there. And humidity is going to be around, but not oppressive and pretty much that's going to be the situation throughout the the rest of the week. As far as nothing really too extreme. I love this picture. Who knew? Fungus could be so pretty. That is a pretty pig. <laughs> Use that in a sentence, Mark. Uh, Mike Osterhage showed us a photo on the air that proved there was a fungus <laughs> among us. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, and uh, who would have thought you'd say beautiful fungus? You know. Anyway, uh, we do have lots of clouds out there this morning. I haven't seen a lot, Margie. Have you seen uh, any wet roads out there? Really? Not doesn't, really. Nope. Doesn't look like there's a lot showing up this good. morning. There have been a couple of sprinkles here and there. This is 10 over there at uh, 410. We do have a few showers, and going back about an hour, you can see there's a couple of lightning strikes that were picked up there in parts of the hill country. A few more well, well out to the uh, west of, of uh, and northwest of Del Rio out there. So again, there's going to be one or two scattered showers here and there around the area this morning, scattered uh, thunderstorms and that will be just again the exception rather than the rule as far as any sort of uh, thunderstorms. Not a lot in as far as rain. A couple of these showers in parts of the hill country. Uh, just a few of them out there. And then even here in town, we have just a few of these light little sprinkly showers that are showing up and a few more off to the east there in northern Wilson County and uh, maybe a couple of them heading in towards Seguin. It's not a huge deal as far as rain this morning, but just a couple of them out there. So just be on the lookout for some damp roads, even though we really haven't seen that much so far this morning. Temperatures are going to be holding steady in the next couple of hours and we'll have that 30 percent chance, 30, 40 percent chance for a stray shower couple of claps of thunder here and there 70 at noon and then 74 high temperature today. So we start off about 
three to five degrees above normal. We end up about three to five degrees below normal later on today. And again, computer model is not really bullish on anything as far as rain today. A couple of breaks in the clouds and then by later on this evening, a couple of more of those showers try and pop up there in portions of the hill country. But again, this is not going to be a, a huge, huge rain event by any stretch. So here's what's going on in the satellite and radar loop. And we just have a, a low which is up to the north of us. And that's what's swinging these little disturbances on through here. And you can see on the big picture, it's not really much of anything. Just those few little showers. They'll be hanging around today, scattered about here and there, and maybe going on into tonight. And then upstream from there, there's really not a lot going on. And as I was talking about how this week is going to be somewhat on the, the tranquil side, normal high temperature is 79 degrees. So between today and Friday, sort of average it out, right about 79 degrees. We do start to obviously heat up a little bit more Friday going into Saturday, and there's going to be more humidity around here, especially later Friday going into Saturday. And so that's what's going to be holding the low temperature at 66 degrees Saturday morning, which means there's going to be a lot in the way of humidity hanging around here. But up until then, I mean, right about what you would expect this time of year. Then another front's going to move on through here. That's going to be Saturday into Sunday. And so that's going to trim out some of the humidity. That's going to allow temperatures to get back down closer to normal readings once we get into the uh, the first part of next week. So again, overall, really a fairly pleasant week today. Yes, we we will have a few showers around here, a couple of thunderstorms, some humidity, but not anything just oppressive. 70 at noon today, and then a high temperature is going to make it up to 74 degrees. Again, a couple of scattered showers, a thunderstorm here or there scattered about. Just keep a rain jacket handy. And then tomorrow we make it up to 75 degrees. Again, nothing really extreme, even going into uh, Wednesday, Thursday, hotter Saturday, and then the next front is going to get rid of the humidity by Sunday. We're glad that humidity will go away for a little yes, bit. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Mike. Right now we're at 623, 61 degrees. Tesla is planning to open a new mega factory in China. Details ahead in your morning consumer news. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time. With 50% off installation, free fixtures, and no interest, and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand, but did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get up to 50% off installation and you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. Plus, we're including free fixtures. Go to jacuzzibathroommodel.com or call 800-218-1956. Call now. In today's Tech Bites, Tesla's new mega factory, CEO Elon Musk says his company will open a new facility in Shanghai, China, where giant batteries called mega packs will be built. The batteries are the size of shipping containers and are meant to provide power when demand on a local grid is high. And YouTube has started rolling out a real-time lyrics feature similar to Spotify and other streaming services. The YouTube music version shows the current line highlighted on the screen. The feature is available to some users on both Android and iOS. And thieves are now using a new tool to hack into cars through their headlights. It's a $2,500 device. It's available online. Once it's plugged into the socket behind the headlight, it can open windows and unlock doors. Thieves are making off with Ferraris, Lamborghinis, even Toyotas, and it only takes them about 30 seconds. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Outside with live cam, Mike has been tracking a few showers and storms, but our viewing area is pretty big, so he'll show you where those are coming up. Good morning, everybody. Jump right into the Monday after Easter. It is April 10th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this weekend. And yeah, I guess we could use a few more showers here and there. Doesn't hurt. Everything's really green right now. We still have some wildflowers around. Mike Ostrage is here with more on our watering schedule for the week. You know, I was considering cutting my grass Saturday and I thought, nah, I'll just wait a little bit. So Fence. yeah, it's going to be time to do that, which is I'm not complaining about at all because it's nice that everything, like you said, is green out there. And uh, as far as watering today, we're going to get some folks are going to be getting a little bit of free lawn watering. 
from Mother Nature because of some of those showers out there. Right now at the airport, 61 degrees, 57 is the dew point. So temperatures have been holding pretty steady, and this number, yes, is below 60. So it's not like it's oppressively humid at all, but the, relatively speaking, there's a lot of uh, humidity out there. And so light jacket's not a bad idea. It's kind of that dampish cool when you have this much uh, humidity in the air. Now, as far as rain, I mean, there is not a lot out there. We had a couple of showers earlier this morning, and as you can see, there's a few more northern Uvalde County and uh, here in and around town, maybe a few little sprinkles here and there, but that's pretty much about it. And again, a couple of more out in parts of the hill country and then further out northwest of there. There's really nothing showing up right now. There have been a couple of lightning strikes earlier this morning, and, and again, this is not a big deal as far as rain is concerned, nor a big deal as far as any storms, just a couple of lightning strikes here and there, and you'll see or hear a couple of claps of thunder later on this afternoon. Temperatures overall are three, four, five degrees above normal. 57 is the normal low temperature here in town. And again, the humidity is not oppressively humid, but there's enough of it out there this morning. Mold and oak are both on the high side. The updated count is going to come out in roughly an hour or so. So coolish this morning, a couple of showers, maybe a storm here or there. Uh, it's not going to be a huge rain event. It's not going to be raining everywhere constantly today, but just a few scattered showers and mid 70s for a high temperature. So we will stay about three, five degrees below normal. Then tomorrow in midweek, nothing really to write home about. Roughly normal temperatures, upper 70s, up mid to upper 50s for low temperatures, a little bit more in the way of some sunshine. It's going to start to heat up then later Friday, Saturday, more humidity, a few more showers, a couple of thunderstorms, but then another front comes through just in time to get rid of some of the humidity by Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. RJ Marquez behind the wheel. What's right. going on? Yes, Mike. So things starting to pick up out here on your Monday morning as people get ready for the work week uh, after a uh, hopefully what was a good holiday weekend for everyone spending time with friends and family during the Easter Sunday there. So taking a quick like outside with Trans Guide Loop 410 Jackson Keller Road seeing starting traffic starting to build up here. Loop 410 and McCullough as well. Things looking uh, pretty smooth in that area so far. US 90 there Nogalitos on the near west side. Things looking pretty good here as well. Uh, did want to mention again a couple of things that are starting to uh, show up here on the map and we take you out here to the northeast side and uh, we have a stalled vehicle out there in the southbound lanes at Judson Road. So just Again, keep in mind if you're heading into the San Antonio area from the northeast side, uh, this is a stalled vehicle right now being reported southbound at Judson Road, but uh, traffic flow still moving pretty good in that area. All right, I want to take you all the way back out to the southwest side now, kind of the opposite corner of town here. So we have still this stalled vehicle there on the westbound lanes at Loop 410 at Palo Alto Road. Um, doesn't appear to be causing any major delays when it comes to any sort of traffic backups or things of that nature. But again, traffic starting to pick up here as we get closer to our seven o'clock hours. Kind of what we're expecting out there as we take one more quick look at Transguide there. Loop 410, State Highway 51, looking pretty good in that area as well. And 1604 Wiseman Boulevard at the far west side, things looking pretty good in that area there as well. All right, Morgan 70, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Top story this morning. A lot of questions remain today after four crashes that were all connected on the west side of town. Happened Sunday afternoon. We're told the driver in a silver pickup crashed into a utility pole at the corner of Seralva and General McMullen. The entire block was out without power, but CPS Energy restored it fairly quickly. One person was arrested. We're told Park Police are handling this case. Near Longview, a woman is recovering after sheriff's deputies say she was found alive in a vehicle underwater. This happened at a lake about 40 miles south of Longview. Marion County Sher Sheriff deputies say the woman had been listed as missing. Fisherman first called investigators when he noticed a black Jeep underwater about 40 feet away from a boat ramp. The woman was taken to the hospital. No word on her condition. Atascosa County mourning the loss of their former sheriff. Sheriff Tommy Williams passed away over the weekend. That's according to a post from the current sheriff on social media in a statement they wrote in part quote if you ever met him he remembered you he was a friend to all a fantastic politician a true public servant and a great sheriff father husband and boss end quote according to the post williams served as sheriff from 1973 into 2012 he passed away saturday night after a lengthy illness and every year the san antonio chamber of commerce participates in sa to dc 
Uh, during the trip, local leaders go to the nation's capital to advocate for the city, and this year was full of key priorities. The interim president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce joined Leading SA yesterday to discuss the history, goals, and logistics of that trip. Dave Peterson joined us live. We talked about a lot. We talked about how more than 150 representatives from San Antonio, they went all the way to Washington, D.C., advocating for our priorities. Those priorities, they range from transportation to military to technology like Port San Antonio. We talked about past successes. We talked about this trip in particular. Take a listen to the conversation. Speaker of the House Ryan, a few years ago, when he met our group, he said, you know, it really sends a message when you get that many people in the room. And so this year we've advocated with the Department of Defense uh, for innovative ways to support the DOD and the Air Force with uh, Port San Antonio. In 2015, we were able to get funding for the new federal courthouse. In 2021, VIA was included in the president's budget for the first time. In 2020, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers work plan included the final $26 million reimbursement to Bear County for advancing a portion of the federal share of the mission reach. Every Sunday at 8 a.m., we talk to leaders in and around our San Antonio community talking about timely issues. So join us next Sunday at 8 a.m. For now, though, you can go to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com, check out the full conversation with Dave Peterson, learn more about the SA to D.C. trip. And guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. And your morning headlines, a political battle in Tennessee is exploding into a nationwide debate. Two lawmakers expelled from the state house accused of breaking the rules during a protest about gun laws. And now they could soon get their old jobs back, well, at least temporarily. Justin Jones of Nashville could be reappointed to his seat as early as today, just days after Republican colleagues ousted him over a gun control protest on the House floor. The other lawmaker, Justin Pearson of Memphis, could learn his fate on Wednesday. He is accused of state. He's accusing state Republicans of disenfranchising tens of thousands of voters. Now to a leak of highly classified military and intelligence documents with details ranging from Ukraine's air defenses to Israel's spy agency. Now U.S. officials are scrambling to identify the leak's source. The investigation is still at its early stages, and those running it have not ruled out the possibility that pro-Russian elements were behind the leak. There's a potential for damaging of U.S. relationships with some of our allies because some of this information could only have been gleaned if the United States was spying on senior leaders. Pentagon has referred the issue to the Department of Justice, which has opened a criminal investigation. We turn now to golf's greatest tournament, the Masters, and a new champion. ABC's Andrew Dimbert shows us how an old champion and an amateur nearly stole the spotlight. Rom wins the Masters Marathon. John Rom has become the fourth Spaniard in history to win a green jacket at Golf's Cathedral, Augusta National. His wife and young son looking on. The weekend marred by bad weather. At one point, these trees tumbling down, nearly falling on fans. The weather prompting several delays. When the third round was suspended Saturday, it was Brooks Kepka from the controversial Saudi-backed Live Golf Tour on top. Yeah! But when play resumed, John Rahm came roaring back, erasing a four-shot deficit to take the lead over Kepka. There's some days you have it, some days you don't, and today just wasn't one of those. Now a two-time major champion, Rahm captured his first coveted green jacket. It was an incredible Sunday. Too, too bad Brooks didn't have his best, but we still battled out there. Tiger Woods withdrawing due to injury, visibly laboring on the course two years after the car crash that nearly took his leg. There's no debate that this is the twilight of Tiger's career, but again, at this point, he's just gra grateful to be able to compete. Who knows what his tournament future holds? Ascending to fan favorite, amateur Sam Bennett, the first amateur to finish in the top 20 since 2005. Still a student athlete, Bennett cannot collect prize money from Augusta, which would have been around $300,000 for his 16th place finish. And in his next scheduled tournament, he'll have to carry his own clubs. A humbling run for the senior from Texas A&M. You know, walking up 18 was by far the coolest experience of my life. The Masters and Augusta was everything I ever dreamed of. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 641, 61 degrees. San Antonio Book Festival is coming up in just a few days after the break of local author's latest work that's bringing attention to an import issue affecting women. 
and welcome back at 644. The San Antonio Book Festival is just five days away and we're taking a look at some of the authors that will be attending this festival. Tiffany Huertas explains how one local author is using her book to help shine a light on women who disappear or are killed around the world. Guadalupe Garcia McCall is no stranger to the struggles women face. That is why she wrote her book, Echoes of Grace, a book of fiction focusing on an 18-year-old trying to find her way after a great loss, but also focusing on real-life events happening daily. Well, in Echoes of Grace, one of the things that I did was think about the ma micro story and how that is actually reflecting or mirroring the macro story of violence against women, femicide, all the things that women have, to put, have been putting up with in the world for years and years. McCall hopes her book resonates with her readers and gets them thinking about changes that could be made to help women. I want people to look at this book as my call to action. How do we change policies and procedures and laws to protect women more. When it comes to the book festival, McCall is no stranger to it. She has been attending a few years now and is looking forward to sharing her love of writing to the city she calls home. Well, it's home. San Antonio's home. I've been here for the last 30-something years and um, seeing everybody come to the festival, friends, family, loved ones, ex-students, former students, new students, it's just exciting to have those conversations around literature. You will have the chance to meet McCall at the Book Festival, which takes place April 15th at the Central Library and UTSA's Southwest Campus. To learn more about McCall and the Book Festival, head to KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Uh, definitely one of the better events here. The Book Festival, can't wait for that this weekend. I uh, wanted to take you outside real quick with Transguide traffic cameras. We're looking at the near, uh, the west side here, US 90 at General McMullen. There's a reported stall in the eastbound lanes of 90 here at General McMullen. You can see that traffic is moving along pretty smooth in this area. Appears to be off to the shoulder uh, earlier when the camera was zoomed in a little bit closer. I saw some emergency vehicles uh, trying to clear out that stalled vehicle in this area. But uh, again, a stall being reported here on uh, 90 at General McMullen as we take a closer look with our maps. Doesn't appear to be causing any uh, major delays right now, but something to definitely keep in mind. Again, eastbound lanes, US 90, General McMullen. All right, Let's take you back to the northeast side. Um following this uh, stalled vehicle as well there on the southbound lanes at Judson Road. So people kind of making their way into kind of the downtown area from the northeast side. Just kind of keep this in mind if you are headed out in this area here. Again, stalled vehicle off to the shoulder, southbound lanes at Judson Road. As we take a look at our bigger map here, and you can see that traffic moving along pretty smooth so far in the San Antonio metropolitan area. Uh, not not too many uh, major things going on at the moment right now, but again, uh, you know what, things are probably going to pick up here as we get to our 7 o'clock hour. One more quick look at Transguide. Again, this just showed up a little while ago, stalled vehicle there on the west side at 90 at General McMullen. Just uh, take caution and move aside of emergency vehicles well, if you're driving through there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. sure. Somebody. And then an adorable picture. I love this yeah. one. You know, and I was looking at this and take a look at it, and I was wondering, some yeah. are photoshopped in. But yeah. some are actually wearing yeah. some, yeah. Which, which is cute, that they could get them on any of them. We <laughs> see four sets of legit ears and two, two phony. sets of... Two uh, will look like a Snapchat filter almost. Or virtual ears. Two virtual ears. Yes. Hey, but there's one in the back that has, doesn't have any ears at all. Do you mm. see that? Mm -hmm. But all the dogs <laughs> are real? The, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, so. they're, they're not photoshopped in. <laughs> right. So cute pick. And Rodriguez pick. has her hands full. Well, yeah. And, and, but you skipped over the uh, the caption right. Oh, it's kind of hidden there. It says KSAT, we love you. Aww. Happy Easter. Happy so. Easter. Yes, we love you all for sending in these pictures. Thank you very much for that. And uh, we've got temperatures that are not bad this morning. It's kind of coolish out there. We're at 61 right now, but it's sort of with that extra humidity, sort of a, a dampish cool. You can see lots of clouds off in the distance there at uh, 410 at 10 on the northwest side. And we do have a few little light sprinkly showers that have been showing up on radar recently, but not really a lot. And it's just going to be sort of that, uh, well, you know, here and there, one or two of these little showers sort of uh, scooching by, and uh, that'll be about it. We've had a few of them here in town. 
not much at all, and that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of today. There have been a couple of lightning strikes this morning, so even this afternoon, one or two of those. Don't be surprised if you hear a clap of thunder, but that's going to be, I think, the exception rather than the rule. We don't have much of a breeze out there, but one thing to take note of, the wind is coming in here from the northeast, and that's what's helping to keep the humidity somewhat in check. Now, relative to the temperature, it is very high, which is why, again, it's sort of that damp cool, but we're not seeing these just oppressively high uh, dew point readings nor oppressively high humidity and that's going to be the case over the next couple of days so it's going to be sort of held in check so temperatures this morning stay pretty steady we are going to make it up to 70 at noon and then 74 for high temperature again one or two showers out there uh, maybe a clap of thunder but not raining constantly, not raining everywhere, which is what this computer model depicts fairly well. A couple of the uh, showers and storms will pop back up then by later on this morning, or excuse me, by later on this afternoon, going into the evening hours. And that's pretty much going to be about it. Maybe one or two of them uh, left over overnight. Again, that'll be about it. This is not going to be a huge rain event. Nothing. Fortunately, unfortunately, like we had last week with the beautiful rain that we got 70 at noon today, a couple of showers, maybe a storm here or there. Same thing later on this afternoon, 74 Again, a couple of scattered showers here or there, a thunderstorm or two. Then we go into the middle part of the week and really it's going to be sort of a uh, I guess you can call it sort of a blase week. Temperatures pretty close to where they should be, upper 70s, mid upper 50s, and we'll have sunshine mixed in with the clouds. Humidity is going to be OK. Hotter, more humid late Friday, Saturday. A couple of more showers and thunderstorms late Saturday. But another front then clears things out for Sunday. Not bad. No. Not Overall, bad. nice looking week. Thank you, Mike. Time check 651, 61 degrees. Look out there with Lycan. Uh, kind of cold for that 61 if you need a light jacket, maybe now. But to be safe, go ahead and pack that umbrella. Mike says there's a chance of rain here and there. We're going to have one last check of weather and traffic after the break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the leak of highly sensitive documents. The Justice Department launching an investigation as the Pentagon tries to contain the damage. And the showdown over the abortion pill after two federal judges issued conflicting rulings. Now, how future access hangs in the balance for the whole country. We'll have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. All right, taking a look at TransGuy traffic cameras, this stalled vehicle out here in the northeast side, we see emergency vehicles have just pulled up, try and clear this truck out of the way. I-35 southbound lanes at Judson. Keep that in mind if you're making your way out here in just a bit. So we have another stalled vehicle here. Eastbound lanes at General McMullen. Traffic not being too much affected in that area, but again, it is getting very busy out there. We will continue to follow the very latest and give you the, uh, an update here at 730. Mike, how are things looking outside? Actually, not too bad. Grab a light jacket just because it's kind of that dampish cool. Uh, road appears to be dry out there at 410. We've got a couple little sprinkly showers around. Uh, not much, though, this morning. It could be a little mist here and there. Six 62 right now, mid upper 50s, low 60s, a little bit above normal, and then we're going to make it up to 74 later on today. A couple of showers, a storm or two thrown in today. It's not going to rain constantly nor everywhere, but just one or two of them out there. 74 for a high temperature, and then kind of tranquil the rest of the week. Close to normal, some sunshine, and then hotter by a Saturday. Another front clears us out Sunday. And a thank you to RJ Marquez for jumping in for yes. Stephen this Always morning. Thank you. Time. Always a great time. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yes, thanks for keeping us updated. And we'll have a cut-ins with you and Mike in just a minute. We'll be right back.